everybody. My name is Aditya Sharma. And I'm Ambar Jain. We are your course instructors for the course Physics through Computational Thinking. This course has two aspects, Computational Thinking and Physics. Computational Thinking is a necessary 21st century skill that all the science graduates, mathematics, engineering, and technology graduates should graduate with. Computational thinking is a four-pronged approach. It constitutes of define, translate, compute, and interpret. Define means taking a physics problem and breaking into small set of questions that we can analyze individually. The next stage is translate. At this point, we take the physics problem and make it abstract into a mathematics problem, and then we think how to put this mathematics problem in onto a computer. We translate physics problem into a mathematics problem, then translate it into a problem on a computer. The third stage of this process is compute. This is where we actually take the algorithm and execute it on a computer and we obtain the results. We can reanalyze the results if it is required. The fourth stage is interpretation of the results that we have obtained. This could be in form of visualization, in form of data, in form of plotting. At this point, we also make a connection between the results that we have obtained on a computer with what kind of physics problem we were looking at. So this is the interpretation goes from the, the numerical or plots onto a physics problem. So this is a four-pronged approach that compute that constitutes computational thinking. We are going to use physics as a playground for computational thinking, which means that we'll take already known examples from various areas of physics, such as classical mechanics, quantum mechanics, mathematical methods, electrodynamics, dynamics, courses that are already familiar to you from your undergraduate studies, and we'll take these examples simple examples and we'll learn how to do computational thinking from that and we'll slowly build up more complicated cases. Our approach will involve lots of uh, different kinds of computational techniques. One of them will be solving algebraic equations on a computer analytically. Also we'll do numerical techniques where we'll employ numerical algorithms to solve a problem and we'll also learn how to do visual thinking on a computer. All of this we'll do learn using Mathematica, which is a symbolic programming language. We will learn how to take physics problems and use computational thinking as a tool to solve on Mathematica. If you're not familiar with Mathematica, this will be an opportunity for you to learn Mathematica. You don't have to have any prior knowledge. As we will go along, we'll learn all the tools and techniques that we need to know for, the, for this course. Okay, so let's take a simple example to illustrate this philosophy of computational thinking. So all of us are familiar with, with dropping a marble from a certain height and it falls down and the trajectory is of course just a straight line. So we can ask how much distance does this particle cover as a function of time. And uh, so the answer is just uh, x equal to half gt squared as we know from high school physics. Right? So if you think uh, a moment we recall that this really comes from uh, writing down a differential equation which is x double dot is equal to g constant uh, acceleration due to gravity and then there's a couple of steps involved in, in uh, obtaining the answer familiar territory so now if we were to do this uh, via the computational thinking approach we might want to develop a, a numerical algorithm which can solve differential equations in general and then so we can, let's think of this as a black box we take this differential equation x double dot equal to g and pass it through this uh, black box and out of this it's going to give you numerical data so the computer will give you two columns of data one for time and then one for distance and then finally in the interpret stage what we want to do is check whether the data that has come out of this this whole exercise will agree with the already known solution which is this half gt squared which is going to be a a, a quadratic curve so we, we plot the first curve and then we bring in the second curve and then put one on top of the other and if both of them agree exactly and so that means that it, it brings it puts a check on each of the methods right we have two independent methods both of them have been worked out correct it's a trivial example and so you might think why bother working so hard but the whole point is that this builds a method of a, a solid approach on top of which more difficult problems can be worked out for example in this very problem we can ask what happens to this marble what is its how does its distance vary as a function of time if there were drag forces in play if there were if the differential equation were even slightly more complicated x double dot is equal to some function of x or function of x dot and then it's it's not a problem that can be solved analytically whereas 
our black box will be able to provide us answers and many more right so this whole course if you persevere through it you will see that lots of examples it's a very example friendly course and you will you keep playing with the things and you will you learn to develop a philosophy which can help you in attacking problems of a very wide kind so that's what this course is about thank you